Hey, future drivers. Today, we're gonna be having a deep look at the all-electric Rolls-Royce Spectre and some of its latest updates. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button so you're the first to know about the latest EV news and reviews. Let's start with a statement made by Charles Rolls going all the way back to the year 1900. The electric car is perfectly noiseless and clean. There is no smell or vibration. He noted their silent and clean nature, but also acknowledged infrastructure concerns. Despite 120 years of development, no petrol-powered Rolls-Royce can match the smoothness, silence, and responsiveness of an electric car like the 2011 Nissan LEAF or 2015 Tesla Model X. However, this is set to change with the release of the all-electric Spectre in a year. When asked why it took so long, Rolls-Royce CEO Torsten Muller Otvos emphasized that the company's priority is to ensure that any electric car they produce is a true Rolls-Royce first and electric second. Rolls-Royce has a deep understanding of its customers' preferences, as the numbers of buyers is relatively small. CEO Torsten Muller Otvos has been gathering feedback on electric vehicles from customers for over a decade. He notes that their attitudes toward EVs have shifted significantly in that time. Many Rolls-Royce customers already own multiple cars, including at least one EV, and their feedback on electric propulsion is overwhelmingly positive. As a result, the Spectre electric vehicle will not have to educate buyers on the concept of charging with a cable instead of using gasoline. In 2011, Rolls-Royce created a demonstration project, a converted Phantom known as the 102 EX. This vehicle was a perfect representation of the Rolls-Royce brand, with its silent, smooth, and luxurious ride. However, the 102 EX was limited by its short range and long charging time. CEO Torsten Muller Otvos notes that 10 years ago, customers were not ready for EVs due to the limitations of the technology at the time. However, Advancements in battery, propulsion, and software technology now enable Rolls-Royce to produce an electric vehicle without any compromise on size, range, charging, or user experience. Additionally, he was not willing to compromise by converting a gas-powered car into an electric one. According to CEO Torsten Muller Otvos, the Spectre is as significant as the Silver Ghost, which was introduced in 1906. He believes that this marks the start of a new era for the company and deserves a celebration. The Fastback Coupe is a particularly emotional car, and its purpose is to replace the Phantom Coupe, which has not been in the range since 2016. The Spectre is a full-size Rolls-Royce and is quite large, with wheels measuring 23 inches in diameter, which makes it larger than a Range Rover. It can travel up to 320 miles on a single charge, and has a drag coefficient of 0.25, which is a result of BMW's extensive use of computational fluid dynamics and wind tunnel testing. Despite its size and weight of 2,975 kilos, the Spectre can accelerate from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds, thanks to its front and rear motors that produce a combined 585 horsepower and 664 pound-foot of torque. But above all, the Spectre is a luxurious and extravagant vehicle. The Spectre not only has to perform like a Rolls Royce, it has to look like one. It features the iconic Greek temple grille and Spirit of Ecstasy mascot, but with some variations. The grille is the widest ever on a Rolls Royce and does not require cooling for an internal combustion engine, so its primary function is to reduce drag. The veins of the grill are also backlit at night for added visual appeal. Additionally, the Spirit of Ecstasy statue features a new interpretation with Eleanor Thornton leaning forward into the breeze. The split headlights last seen on the Phantom Coupe are also present, with the upper blades permanently lit and the main headlights emerging from a dark background. The body of the Spectre exudes confidence in its design. Many cars today have relatively flat surfaces and minimal feature lines, but achieving a strong and cohesive design can be challenging. 
The Spectre, however, successfully executes this look with surfaces that convey a sense of monolithic strength. The few lines present are sharp and precise, making the vehicle appear as a solid block of carved metal rather than a piece of bent sheet metal. The chrome accents also contribute to this effect, creating the impression of hewn and polished mass. The door handles even have a resemblance to those of a bank vault. Opening the door, as with traditional Rolls-Royce practice, the doors are rear-hinged, allowing for easy entry and exit. The interior of the Spectre is distinctly Rolls-Royce, but even better. No other car manufacturer can match the confident simplicity of the design. Every Rolls-Royce since the Goodwood era began in 2003 has featured this aesthetic, which is more like furniture than a conventional car interior. The tactile physical climate controls and iDrive controller will be familiar to previous Rolls-Royce owners. The instruments are presented on a screen, but retain an analog-like appearance. They can also be customized to match the commissioned fabrics and leathers. The seats in the Spectre feature a lapel, a small detail of upholstery that provides an additional option for contrasting design. The doors can be customized with the starlight feature, which includes 4,796 small bright dots, or with large panels of wood. Additionally, a similar starlight panel can be placed on the dashboard of the passenger side. The Spectre is a four-seater, not a two-and-two, two, according to CEO Torsten Muller Altvoss. The spaciousness of the car is considered a luxury, and the owners may want to bring friends along for the ride. Even though it's a coupe and likely not to be used as a chauffeured vehicle, it is still a versatile car that can be used for entertainment, a night out, or just for leisurely drive. It is not a commuter car for the average Rolls-Royce owner who has an average of seven cars in their garage. With a range of 320 miles on a single charge, it will meet the needs of most owners who usually make shorter trips and have access to charging stations at home, work, and other places they frequently visit. The range of the car is not a concern for the brand, and owners don't need to drive from London to Edinburgh. Rolls-Royce cars were never about range. The V12 Rolls-Royce also doesn't go as far as 320 miles, and nobody has asked for a bigger petrol tank. We're gonna wrap it up here, future drivers. What do you guys think of the Rolls-Royce Spectre? Do you think it'll be a success? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you're the first to know about the latest EV news and reviews. We hope to see you in the next video.